Now we know the events that took place after the Big Bang. We got a major event known as recombination when atoms form, and then after that, matter becomes more dominant. After that, galaxies and stars form, which is very important for us because that's where we come from. <coughs> now, what is the proof of all this? What's the proof that there was an explosion, there, there was a Big Bang? Okay? This is known as the microwave background radiation. Okay? If there is an explosion in a building, okay, you should be able to go in the building an hour later, two hours later, three hours later, maybe eight hours later, and you should be able to detect the presence of that explosion, right? Maybe the, the room should be warmer. Maybe there should be a certain smell in the room or something, you know? Any kind of the presence of an explosion, you should be able to tell the presence of that explosion. Same thing like this. If there was a big, huge explosion, okay, even though we're 13 billion years later, there should still be some remnant of that explosion, something. We call this the microwave background radiation. It's the leftover energy after this Big Bang explosion. So cosmologists did the math of this in the 1930s, 1940s, and they figured out since we were about 13 billion years after, remember space has enlarged. When space enlarges, the energy of the Big Bang goes down. Remember, the wavelength expands. So they figured out by now the remnant of this explosion, this huge energetic explosion, it should have cooled down by now. It shouldn't be hot at all. As a matter of fact, it should cool down and it should correspond to an average energy of about 3 Kelvin. Remember, the, the, uh, the temperature of the universe is going to be about 3 Kelvin now. So what would an explosion of about 3 Kelvin look like? What would that look like in outer space? So they went out looking for it. Okay. In the 1960s, this happened actually accidentally. Robert Wilson and Arno Penzias, they were two astronomers, they were looking in the sky in the radio spectrum and doing some other kind of study. And they, no matter where they faced their radio telescope, they kept noticing a certain energy coming from the sky. And they didn't know what it was. Uh, was it some signal, somebody trying to communicate to us, or was it stars, or what it was, where, what, what it was they didn't know. Eventually, they realized that this radio source that was coming was in the microwave range. And it actually corresponded to the leftover energy after the Big Bang. Okay? By now, it, w it had really cooled, and it was a microwave uh, radiation. So this radiation was discovered kind of by accident because they weren't specifically looking for it. So then when they mapped out this radio frequency that was coming from all directions, they found out that they corresponded to a wavelength which happens to correspond to temperature of 2.7 Kelvin. Now, that was pretty interesting because they went back to the calculations that had been made earlier by cosmologists, and cosmologists had said the universe should have cooled down by now. 2.7 Kelvin, 3 Kelvin, oh, oh, we have actually discovered this microwave background, radiation, the after effect of the Big Bang. So they became very famous for doing this, even though it was, they weren't specifically looking for it at first. And this is Arno Penzias and Robert Wilson, both of them. They became famous. And this, this is the radio telescope that they used behind them. Now, ever since then, one of the other key spacecrafts that went up, by 1990s, our instruments were more detailed, a lot more advanced. So we actually sent out a COBE satellite. Remember when we were talking about telescopes back in lecture five, we talked about different kinds of telescopes in different ranges, and we noticed that the COBE uh, satellite was specifically in which range? Well, this is way back in lecture five. It was in the infrared range, right? And what was its purpose to do? Infrared corresponds to what range of the electromagnetic spectrum? Infrared is otherwise known as what? 
starts with H, heat. Our bodies radiate heat in the infrared, okay? So if the, <coughs> if the universe radiated in the infrared, we could then detect that, okay? So basically, Kobe went and started looking at the sky and mapping out this radiation. It was a very cool, very, very cool radiation. But every data that it got, you see, wavelength of nine, nano, na, nine millimeters, and this was the intensity of the radiation, you see? So it, it basically confirmed the graph that we knew of, that it should happen. So this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, you see? So each small square is a data point from the COBE satellite. Therefore, this radiation spectrum is the expected radiation spectrum of a universe that is 2.726 Kelvin. Okay? Every single data fit the expected radiation spectrum of that kind of a universe. So black body curve for temperature 2.726 Kelvin, the COBE data fit this with remarkable accuracy. Therefore, the COBE satellite put an end to the debate. There was an explosion 13 billion years ago, and the after effect of that has cooled down to 2.7 Kelvin by now. So that's why it says, in the 1990s, the COBE satellite was launched to space and mapped out the sky and showed that the radiation existed and its temperature was 2.7 Kelvin. You see, those data points that you saw. So this was, I believe you can say, the final confirmation of the Big Bang Theory. It also sent back graphs like this back to us. So what this is showing you is the radiation intensity in the sky. You don't really see it that well on the projector, but you have some yellow dots, there are some uh, blue dots, and there are some red dots. So you, you can see little differences, you see? And then what you see, what that means is that this radiation, parts of it are a little bit warmer than the other parts. The other parts are a little bit, tiny bit cooler. So there's deviations in the temperature spectrum of the, of the universe. Those deviations are very important as well because when the universe began, it's expanded, expanded, it was, remember, pure energy, and then atoms formed, okay? Those differences in the radiation spectrum caused certain portions to clump together and become, there was more matter that formed there, right? So you need temperature deviations, otherwise the universe will become pure energy all across. The temperature deviations caused certain portions to be different than others, and then those portions formed galaxies, and galaxy clusters, superclusters, and stuff like that. So the, not only did the COBE satellite map out the sky, it shows us the temperature, but it also shows us little temperature fluctuations, which eventually yielded galaxies, and we need that to happen. So very interesting, the development of all this theory and our scientific understanding is based on how well our technology is improving as well. We're understanding where we came from and how we came here.